welcome back to the show political time with me Kitty Ando up here in the studio with me is Dr. John Kisi representing of course the MPP and I also have Michael Frimpong PRO for the NDC Island chapter. We're discussing the Bonahafu region. It's time for our voter education uh, segment where we talk about how the you know voting trends have been. We're concentrating on the regions. So let me tell you how Bonahafu region has voted. In 2004 um, the presidential candidate Jen, uh, uh, Kufo had 51.95%. The NDC's Mills had 46.11%. The parliamentary seats were 24. The NPP had 14. And the NDC had 10. In 2008, the NPP's Stanley Fado had 50.56%. The NDC's Mills had 47.70%. In the parliamentary elections, the NPP has 16 seats, the NDC had 8. In the 2012 election, the NDC's John Mahama had 51.49%, uh, the NPP's Akufado had 47.33%. And it appears that we can, you know, if you look at, if you look at the trend, that since 2004, the BA has voted the NPP. But it appears that something went wrong in 2012. Tell me about it, Doctor. In 2012, we were expecting to have won the Bronga for region. Uh, I think we, we need to be mindful of the demographics of the region. Mm. You know, um, we do have a lot of um, people moving up no from up north and coming into the region because of the farming. Mm. And, um, and also, as we said in the earlier segment, um, also people come in to explore for um, gold, <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. you know. So um, the demographics is is is, is, is changing um, quite significantly. Right. Um, that notwithstanding, um, we we are confident that um, going into the 2016 election, um, we're going to take back that region um, um, because we are talking to the issues that matter to the people. Like um, because we we have seen um, the. Um, NHIS, you know, for example, um, being run down by this current government and uh, the, the opportunities that they had under uh, President Kufo to have just, you know, paid their premium and benefited from, um, you know, um, health care um, as was provided um, in, in President Kufo's time mm. has um, completely been um, eroded. Okay, we have, we have seen um, government, um, um, you know, um, <laughs> people in high places taking mining concessions and bringing in people from outside the region to, to come and work. You know, these are all things that the people have observed and they have commented on and as I said earlier, um, they have demonstrated on these matters previously and they still do demonstrate about this and it's going to be a big factor in how they vote in the 2016 election. Uh, and so we are going to see a reverse you know, uh, they're going back, um, a Bronga Alpha region will go back home um, to the MPP in 2016 election. I see, hopefully so. We understand that some 720, over 720,000 cities have been allocated the region um, through Maslock. A huge amount of that, uh, uh, that sum has gone to Queen Mothers at the instance of the First Lady who comes from that region. And that's why they call uh, your candidate Akunta. But then, is this not, you know, does this not amount to vote buying that the institutions like the Ghana Integrity Initiative and the CDD has accused you of topping, the NDC of topping? Of course, the NPP is there, but you are the top. Not at all, uh, Gifty. If you look at the mass lock, 190,607 uh, 190, people have benefited from this particular, uh, um, you know, microfinance and um, small scale um, loan facilities. And again, about 25 have been given tractors, about 953 have been given vehicles. And the thing is, it's not about, you know, we vote buying or anything. These are- Well, let's call it something else, not vote buying. Absolutely. Let's just say, you know, you're, you're being nice to them so that they'll be nice to you in return. No, what we are trying to do is to uh, transform the lives of these people. Is to okay. make sure that we give them a head start. We give them something to work with. A young man who has got absolutely nothing, nobody to rely on, and has been able to get a vehicle, you know, work and pay, and is working. Will you tell me that this person will not vote for the NDC? He will because he was, his life has been changed. Under Kufu, 
Brown have originally were voting for the MPP. Mm -hmm. Under President Mahama, they have changed and they are voting for the NDC. Okay. If you look at the statistics, we our votes are going up almost every year. Well, it time. changed in 2000, is, uh, 2012. Right from, two, in right from 2000 to 2004, then 2008, it changed and it's now appreciating in favor of, of, of the well, NDC. Well, it changed significantly in favor of the NDC in absolutely, 2012. Absolutely. Why? Because we've been able to put... Probably because his wife comes from there. Apart from that, I mean, definitely, if your wife is coming from there and you are not doing anything to help the people in terms of, you know, their livelihood, do you know that... And that's why I'm curious about giving the Queen Mothers this huge amount of money. I mean, why now? You could have given this to them, you know, before? No, these are going to beneficiaries. They are okay. going to people in the region, you know, in the Upper West region, um, about, about um, 225,000 uh, women were given, you know, this loan facilities to, to, to work. We can't, we can't say that it goes to the Queen Mothers. No, it is going to people who deserve it, people whose, whose lives deserve, uh, deserve to be transformed uh, or deserve to change. And that is what we're doing. Okay. Apart, from, apart from the fact that we have been able to empower our youth in youth in agriculture, We've given them about 100,000 seedlings, cocoa seedlings, to help these guys, you know, up for me. you know, to be able to farm. We've also been able to help these people in this community. In the, we've given them, uh, you know, government has secured $450,000 to actually improve the cocoa rolls. Again, okay, most of these people are farmers. Okay. So if you are improving the cocoa uh, rolls in this area, if you are helping them, giving them uh, you know, microfinance and, mm. and loans to help them, if you are giving them in, you know, in training, we have this um, you know, youth, youth, youth entrepreneur, <laughs> youth enterprise uh, support whereby we are training this youth, we are actually uh, uh, mentoring them, and we are giving them financial support to sustain them. So that is why okay. they, they will vote massively for the NDC come 2016. That will be very good for you. But Doc, doc he's done be, uh, gone one minute, 25 seconds beyond, beyond his time. So I'm going to give that same time to you. Right. Um, I mean, he's, he's, he's talked about um, money is being given out to people. I mean, we, we all know that he, it's, it's gone to Queen Mother's uh, for whatever reason we don't know. Obviously, they are not the people in need in that community. They are not the people who need the support that he's talking about. They only know why well, it's gone it, to well, them. Well, well, you, um, can, you empower they, one woman and then, you know, express well, well, the cause. Queen, 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 queen Mother's, okay. Um, let's, yeah. let's continue. And to. they are traders. And so, you know, <laughs> well, it's all the Queen Mother's are traders. Everything. All the Queen Mother's are traders. Uh, what the point I'm making is that there are people in the community who need the kind of help that they are talking about, but okay. it's going to the wrong places. And as I said earlier on, that the young people in that community have been demonstrating you know because of lack of jobs and lack of opportunities mm -hmm. let me also uh, let me address an issue that came up um, earlier in the year about um, this um, um, fake um, savings and loans yeah, um, thing right. that happened mm -hmm. in the region under the watch of, of the president and his wife who hails from the region. And we we know and we are reliably informed that some people in higher places, I don't want to mention them, were actually supportive and encouraging the people to put their money or save their money with these um, savings and, and loans companies. You know in allegations and, it's good to, to put names because if you're not putting names to it then it's it's like you can't just make wild allegations. Yeah, uh, well, it, 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 because it's, because no one is mentioned, you can't say it's an allegation. But <laughs> yeah, was, I mean, it's it an allegation. It was, it, was, it, was in the news. It. it was it was in the news mm. it was in the news that um, the president's wife was there and he, she actually commended one of them one of the the, the companies mm. that that way that went you know past mm. uh, that could but, have been good faith <laughs> gone bad well, so we, we, but, yeah but but i mean the, the kind of the kind of um uh, returns the kind of interest that they were promising. You mm. know, anybody you know who understands economics, who understands how things work, will know that this is not possible. Mm. But these people were encouraged. You know, a lot of people lost their lives. And what what drives people to to want to put their money in a scheme like this? Which you know, when, as I said, anything that is too good to, to believe is actually, actually too, <laughs> too good, good to, be to believe. You right. know, too good to be true. And people put their money in there because of desperation. Mm. Okay, because they have no opportunities to invest their money in there they are not helped in any way and so they are encouraged go and put your money in in, in such a scheme like okay. this and a lot of Wrap people lost me, their lives and uh, and the government up to now has done nothing about the situation okay. and Which this is the government is saying that these are people who are going to
going to be voting for to return them into power. This is um, when you come in, and that will be the final one on this. Please react to this. To be honest with you, you know, you realize that uh, Dr. Kisi has been making wild education, unsubstantiated allegations he could not actually prove. Now, again, in Did the First Lady encourage any of these people to invest in any of these? It is on record. To be honest with you, if the um, First Lady is advising young people, people in the region, to save their money mm. you know, so that they don't waste their money. I mean, it's a good thing. So that's so, it. Okay. So that is why you make, you make a very good So it's not a word allegation then? No, no. What I'm saying is, I know it cannot be substantiated. I'm saying even you, if you're saying that, you know, it happened. And it I'm is on record. It is on no, record. please allow him. Thank and she recommended no, a no, particular no, no, no. one. You've already made your point. Please go ahead. So I'm saying that even if it happened like that, you know, it would have been done in good faith. Okay, thank you very much. And this is what we do, countdown. So today we're talking about the part sector. It makes a major contribution to um, our economy as a country. But it has suffered, really, really suffered um, over the years. There's been the blame games. The blame games have gone on and everything. But you and I know that when we sit in our home, we expect to have power. And we expect to live in the country that can give us dependable power, just like we enjoy here in the UK. Tell us, gentlemen, what your party is i mean we're tired of the promises actually but what are your plans tangible strategies about the power or the energy sector um we're going to do this in two two and i'm going to start with <laughs> doc <laughs> thank you very much um our viewers and um, gifty um the ndc um, when they came into power promised to address the power situation in our country we have not seen that addressed you know one big problem that we have is the lack of finance to buy the necessary fuel to power the generators and other facilities that we have already installed ghana has enough generation capacity what we lack is the finances to fuel these and so when the NPP comes into power, with the prudent management of the economy, we are going to be able to raise the necessary funds to power the generational capacity that we already have. And this doom so will be an issue of the past. When we come into power, we are going to be tapping into sustainable means of power generation. Ghana has sunlight 24-7, 357 one quarter you know, days in a year. I do not see why, or we at the NPP do not see why we cannot generate power through solar means. If the government will be able to um, remove, some, remove taxes on the importation of solar panels and other facilities that are needed to generate power through, the solar, through, through solar means, then we'll be able to you know, generate um, sustainable means or we'll be able to generate um, power as well through solar and then wind farms as well. If uh, we, we, we are going to be able to uh, invest in wind farms to also generate you know, sustainable means, we are going to be working with developers. You know, developers should be able to generate within their own development you know, by solar or you know, uh, by, by use of uh, wind um, energy, generate their own Your time is uh, up. sources of electricity to, thank you. To, to serve the communities that they develop in. All right. Thank you very much. Your turn, um, Mr. Frimpong. Thank you, Gifty. The electricity uh, demand has grown. It's about 10 to, you know, 10 to 12 percent per annum. Uh, that is the shortfall that we need. And what happened is that, you know, when the MPP came into office, they did not uh, put up or, you know, improve, you know, add to our generation capacity. That actually led to a shortfall. No, you know, <clears throat> we know that in 1983 there was a shortfall, in 1988 it was, in 2006, 2007. So President Muhammad decided to say, look, this problem should be solved one and seven for all. Because of that, he has currently added 1,025 megawatts of, of, of generation capacity to our installed capacity. So if, if doctor is saying that when you come back, we're going to improve, you know, we're going to uh, add more to it, to be honest with you, what we have laid out is going to ensure that our generation capacity will be in, in about 5,000 megawatts. So there will be no need. Now, in terms of solar energy, we've been able to add 2 megawatts of solar energy in Afrogo. So we've been able to ensure 
that our you know our generation capacity has actually gone up significantly like we have the t2 power plants in apazi we have the ameri plant the car power uh, batch these are tangible things so you know short-term measures that we we actually adopted that helped you know our energy you know generation capacity to improve 30 seconds now we we all know that because of the extensive rural electrification project that the ndc embarked and also the growing economy that is why our generation capacity needs to you know you know meet the demand and the ndc government has put in place a signed contracts with jacobson amandi ge uh, sony asogle all these are going to improve the energy and i'm i'm, I'm you know trying to say here is that what i'm trying to say here is that your time our generation capacity is actually going to be increased to the excess of 5000 megawatts so okay. Ghanaians would thank would, you would, very would much have. uh we are done we are done your time is up two minutes uh, for you to tell us what your strategic you know plans are in terms of the the power generation in our country so i believe you're happy and your parties will be happy with you as well thank you so much for coming through thank you so much for staying at home with us on this show of course the show is political time with me gifty and up here i've been here in the studio with dr kisi represents the npp as general secretary npp uk and also in the studio has been mr michael from pawn who is pro for the ndc uk chapter thank you so much for coming we'll catch you again next week and i hope you have a very very good day